Can you hear me? Is it on? Is it on? Your man DJ Silver Knight Party Fanatic. We are here once again. Another interviews. Thank you all for keeping on, tuning in, and rocking with your boy. And today, I'm at Video Drone. Listen, man, we are on North Highland, downtown Atlanta. This, this is like a little, little nook of DVD and VHS and throwback heaven. And today, I'm talking with my boy from the Emmy winning Netflix series, Seven Seconds. My boy Corey Champagne is gonna be here. I, he's probably here somewhere. Let me, let me see if he's outside. See if he's here yet. Come on. The word inner is defined as situated inside or further in, mental or spiritual. The word view is the ability to see something or to be seen from a particular place or a particular way of considering or regarding something, an attitude or opinion. I got some really cool friends that's done and are doing some amazing things, and all of them have stories. Come kick it with me, Silver Knight, the party fanatic, as we go to some of my favorite spots with some of my good friends. This is Interviews. Corey, what you doing out here, man? How are you supposed to be inside? You reading papers? Oh, I was waiting on you. Come on in, right, man. Right. What, what are you reading? Right. <laughs> What's up, man? You good? Hey, come look, on I in. see we match. Listen, we, 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 we can't, look, look, is it like, this is not playing. Like, this come is on, not playing. Come on, come on right, real quick. Look, yo. I got on the, the fatigue. He got on the fatigue. He got the fatigue with the black on the inside. I got right. the black with the fatigue on the inside. This was not planned. I promise to God. I promise. It's happened that way. Look. Okay, my, don't go to the shoes. It ain't the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same. Come on, man. <laughs> After you, sir. All right. Yo. What you think about the spot, man? Go. Huh? Reminds me of my childhood. So look, man, I'm glad you came out. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Your team is winning. Yes. How you feel about that, man? An Emmy? It's a whole Emmy. Well, you know, uh, Regina took one for the whole team, and it was like everybody won yeah. when her name was announced. It was literally one of the best. I mean, I don't know. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. So you went to the Emmy, Emmy yes. uh, presentation. You went yeah. to any after parties? Netflix after parties. Did you, oh. Yeah. Did you turn up? I turned up a little bit, you know Did you saying? put it on the gram? I put it on the gram. It's on the gram. Is it? Did you save Instagram. it? Instagram.com slash Corey Champagne. <laughs> he's plugged his whole Instagram and with the slash. With the slash. With the, <laughs> with the you, slash. Did you put it in the highlights? No. It's on the main page, ready to go. How does it feel to get a, a show that you're a part of and it just won an Emmy, man? How does that feel? Man, that was one of the best feelings ever. Like, yeah. Just seeing her win and even you saw Regina's face and yeah. how surprised yeah. she was. Yeah. It was literally like all of us won. Like, yeah. I don't know, like it was really an investment trip for me. Mm -hmm. And then like when I went out there, I was like, I don't know, cause we only got that one nomination right. and right. like it kind of counted us out. And on the prediction list, she was like number four out of the, uh, the five or six nominees, okay. but okay. I voted her number one. And so my prediction count went up. So anyways, it worked, it just worked out. Like it was happens, just, man. yeah, a little engine that could. Okay, yeah. so ATL, that's your home. Born and raised. Uh, Alliance Theater, that's get, get some of your your chops there, right? Yep. Okay. Park. CP. Huh? Okay. Eight, eight, eight. Peace up. Eight town. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay. So, uh, see, don't start. Right, you know, don't. It's music. It's yeah, all right, the ones in my right. head. How did you? How, how did you start? How, how, what was your process when you first kind of even wanted to think about being an actor? Well, it was just enjoying acting. Okay. And and what I mean by that is like just watching movies, watching mm -hmm. TV shows, just memorizing every line that you could possibly. And at the time it's it feels like it's just like it's fun right you know right. it's something that you don't even notice you're doing and that you're gravitating towards but it took a support system and people around me right. like my family and my brother was the first to kind of notice that like dang every time we pick him up from daycare he's always stuck in front of the tv right, right. memorizing all these lines right. and it was just like well why don't he get into acting and then right. it's like oh that's an actual thing you right. know that's something yeah, that oh, yeah. you actively can pursue and it, but it was also the projects that i grew up watching that let me know subconsciously that it was always possible right like right i never doubted it because i saw representations of myself on tv did you do uh plays when you were younger were you in any school plays and, and things of that nature you know it's crazy when i was in elementary school or when i first started i would always be the one that wanted to do it mm -hmm. but because i kept getting in trouble <laughs> They would not Co call it park always in uh, trouble. Not like that. I like no, but like <laughs> they would they wouldn't know what to do with my energy, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. because I was always so, you know, right. Probably talking dramatic all the time. and actory. Right, right, actory. You know what I'm saying? A actory. Actory. 
So we're, we're at we at Video man. Drone. I had I had to go and look at some of these these movies, man. Um, yeah, we see Titanic down there. That's a, one of my, that used to be my favorite movie. Awesome time. movie, you know. We we got some Denzel in here, you yeah. know, all kind of stuff. We got Jerry Maguire. Now that is my favorite movie of all time. What what favorite movie of all time? All time, favorite movie, Jerry Maguire. Wow. Yep. Why? Now what is about Jerry Maguire? I had this on VHS, by the way. I still have it. <laughs> I'm not giving they, it to I'm about to say they want somebody to send it in. No, there's this guy that collects the VHS tapes. He's not getting mine. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a, a little bit about why is this the most like favorite out of all time? It's a great movie. Great I don't movie. know. I think well, it is a great movie. Yeah. Number one, first and foremost, is very well made. Mm -hmm. Nominated for five Oscars. Cuba Gooding Jr. won Best Supporting Actor for this. You and, might know something about this movie, right? But. Not only is it a good movie, but it's mm -hmm. one of those, I think your favorite movie should be good, but it also should be something that whenever you, it comes on TV, mm -hmm. whenever you play it, you can stop everything and watch it mm -hmm. at any point. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a good long, it's about two hours and some change, yeah. so I love a good get long some time movie. on it. And also, it was another one of those representations of seeing myself on screen. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Rod Tidwell, played by Cooper Gooding Jr., right, and right. Regina King. She keeps showing yeah, up in my life yeah, somehow. Yeah. Well, you, just, you just was on something with her, no, right? And, I, and it's great because I got to tell her that that was one of my favorite, my favorite movie right. of all time. And also just seeing her and Rod's relationship, Marcy mm -hmm. and Rod's relationship mm -hmm. in the movie, mm -hmm. and seeing that this black couple that were going through some financial things, mm -hmm. but they were sticking together and they really loved each other. And, and at the time, my parents were married, mm -hmm. and I grew up watching it with my parents initially. And so just seeing that on screen just I don't know it just takes me back to a time in my life when things were simpler right you know what right, I'm saying right and right so I have the nostalgia of it it's a good movie mm -hmm. it's long I, good acting all of mm -hmm. that like all so, of yeah, the above it's, yeah and it's a good movie. It, you know some things came to fruition man you got to work with Regina got to, work got with to Regina. tell my story huh that's what's that's up crazy man we're gonna turn this so people oh. can see it you might have to rent you already got it you got it on, on Divida 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 well I got it on VHS but actually that's the one that's rare, so I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep, okay. I, I won't. I got it on my computer too. Okay. Yeah, All right. We good. We good. It's October, right? Birthday month. So when's your birthday? Uh, October 24th. October 24th. So almost a Halloween baby. Yep. Exactly. So that, means, a week. That, that means you get all into Halloween. Oh yeah. Like my door, I have a garnish over it with the a pumpkin on it. A Halloween stuff. garnish. Yeah. Sounds like a tasty got door. The, <laughs> in a garnish, <laughs> is it garland, 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 garland. Do you eat the door after? <laughs> no, no, right, right, yeah. So, boom. What you know about this right here? What you know about this right here? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you, Corey. I'm kind of a pansy when it comes to scary movies. I don't watch scary movies. Halloween. I don't. I, I never watch Halloween all the way through. I could never watch the Jason movies, Freddy, none of that. Oh, oh, you, yeah, Paul. You were scared. Terrified. You had to have the light I, on. I, I, no, listen. No, me too. Actually, I, I love light on, <laughs> under the covers. Like, nah, I don't do scary movies, man. No, see, I love scary movies, but I'm like that too. Like, yeah. I'll have to have a night light afterwards, and so you, so you torture yourself. Thing. I put a knife in the in the shower because I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you get so you get weapons all around the shower. No, like I'm like you ain't about to psycho me. That's not about to happen, but I watched the, the movie, but I, I learned a little something from them too. So is this one of your favorite scary movies? Yes. Okay. Yes. What about new school? Any any new school projects that you're like, yo, this is scary as hell, man. I guess like, Scream, Scream, that was what re yeah, reinvented yeah, yeah. the horror genre because... But, but Scream, was Scream scary or was it more susp uh, suspenseful? Like, I could, I could take Scream. I couldn't take this guy here, man. Well, I think <laughs> could it, take Michael Myers. Well, well, the thing about Scream, it revolution that uh, it reinvigorated the uh, horror genre. Okay. Because okay. after Halloween, everybody started doing horror movies in mm -hmm. in the eighties and stuff. Mm -hmm. and it, mm -hmm. it, they got really cheesy and really campy and corny. But when Halloween came, I mean Scream came mm -hmm. out, it reignited the horror genre because it was a genre that was like dead around that time. Gotcha. So. Now, do you think Scream had to make twenty of them? I mean, how many how many Screams was it? Four. Okay. You didn't need four though. I feel like the fourth one was like. I like. I mean, one the, and two. The fourth one was needed just because, uh, for the fans. Okay. Okay. But All right. I can't wait for the new Halloween to come out. Would you uh, act in any scary movies? Would you like it? 
Yes, but the only thing is I will need my contract to say that I don't get killed. And you got to get killed in like the first two minutes, first man. Of all, that's, that's how you got to do oh, it. Oh, no, nah, we ain't doing that. We breaking <laughs> stereotypes all day long. First, like, three, like, opening <laughs> credits, like, Corey said, <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not. Or if it was, it got to be cool like how they did Drew Barrymore in, uh, um, uh, in the first scary movie. I mean, Scream. Scream, yeah, okay. But, wow. nah, nah, I like, I want a scary movie where there's like a male protagonist that survives, mm. and that's me. Okay, you got you got to survive. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like they, those remakes were pretty good never, too. Never saw it. Well, I never, haven't never really. I haven't seen the original, but the remakes they they were scary, especially mm -hmm. the new beginning. Mm -hmm. That's no man, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So there, there's another Halloween. Is that the same one? No, that's oh, that's the anniversary edition. edition. Yeah. Okay, well, so this is, is this horror over here? Cause I don't want to be too close over here too long. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like on Beetlejuice. Hey, yeah. come on now, listen, Beetlejuice. The, matter of fact, wow, right? This is wow. These well, this is right the, here, the Johnny Depp, the yo, Burton section. Listen, these two are my joints. Uh, man, all these Batman. Listen, I, I'm this here. Is all Tim Robbins. I'm here. I'm all day. Tim Alice Burton, Wonderland. Tim I'm here. Playing, I'm here. I can live here. Oh, Mars attacks now. That's part of my job here too. That's a silly, yeah. <laughs> I remember that movie so dumb, man. And it featured black folk, which again, that's that's extremely important for me because, like I said, seeing representation of yeah. myself yeah. on screen let me know that it was always possible. It's possible, yeah. I never yeah. second guessed could I be an actor because right. I always saw people like Ray J was in that. Right. You know? <laughs> so, got the Netflix thing. Yeah. Um, is it true that you got a lot of things booked yourself, like before you before you got agents and whatnot? You were booking things yourself, right? Yeah, I booked the originals myself. I was just I was supposed to actually be a, a background or extra mm -hmm. in that scene, mm -hmm. and then I was up just still plugging away, looking for opportunities. And I saw for that same scene they were looking for somebody to play a singer. Uh, so can you sing? Can, can you sing a little bit? Guess what? I can sing. Me 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 me. Bust something real quick. You for real? I seen it on your IG, man, but hit, hit a little something. Just let, let them know. So many things I gotta tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know how. Cause it's a possibility that you look at me differently, love. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. No, no, we're not we're not using that. I gotta do it over. That's dope, we're, man. Come on. No, we're, That's we're, we're, dope. We're doing it over. We're doing it over. So let me ask you this. Singing. Acting, is there a a uh, mutual love affair going? You know, mutual passion going on with both of those. Like, would you still put out music? You still have a passion to do that? You get on your good side. All right, all right, all right. My mom was a singer. Your parents they sacrifice a lot, like oh, yeah. especially when they've had their own dreams. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for me, uh, my mom she had two kids. I mean, obviously she got married eventually, but mm -hmm. it was one of those things where, you know, because. I think that helped me have that support system because right. her dream didn't necessarily go to where she wanted it to go. Right. So right. she was a, in a better position to say, okay, well, I want to support you so your dream doesn't fall right. by the wayside. Right. So yeah. that's always important, you know, in this industry is just yeah. having people that, a support system because yeah. it, it gets hard. Yeah. It gets real yeah. hard. Yeah, no, I mean, I can imagine, I mean, even with, you know, like you said, with DJing and, and stuff, it, it wasn't for like my brother, my mother. I mean, that support system is so important. And the grind, yep. not giving up. I'm sure you've been through a lot of things on, and, and you still have so far to go. You've come a long way. Yeah. And I know there's so much more you want to do. Um, I mean, speak speak to that, that grind, that person that's coming up and, you know, wanted to pr start pursuing singing or acting or DJing. I mean, speak, speak to some of these things you've overcome, you know? It's one of those things where a lot of, a lot of actors say, if you would rather do anything else mm -hmm. than pursue this career in entertainment or acting or I'm sure DJing right, or whatever, right. then go and do that. If right. you could be an ounce, have an ounce of happiness doing that, but if not, then this is the thing that you need to do because right. it's a grind. It's hard. You, there's a lot of days where you're you feel like you're spending more. Well, you are spending more money than mm -hmm. you're making money. Mm -hmm. Like it's an investment. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, I don't know how many people hit me up after the show came out and we're like, yo, Corey, man, I mean, I know you forever, but I, I, I didn't know you really acted like that. I, right. I mean, I knew you said you wanted to be an actor, but I thought it was just like everybody else out here, you know, doing extra work and wanting to do acting. I didn't know you really acted, right, man. Right, right. And I'm like, bro, did you think I was 
working at Ross and doing my catering jobs and brand mm -hmm. ambassador jobs mm -hmm. and all this mm -hmm. stuff and mm -hmm. telling the you promo what I'm doing. Jobs. I do, I do them. I used right, to do them right, all right, the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. You know, they don't know you, about their promo job, hey, would that you, promo would, life. Would you, would you like to try a sample of it? Like, come on now. like Yo, if I hand out another Diet Coke bro, with five gum right, and the five right, right, gum yes. out, oh my God. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that for my health. You know right, what I'm saying? That's right, that's real. Even extra work, that was something that you know a lot of people look down upon, but that was something that taught me how to work on a professional set and right. take a step back and look at all these other artists yeah. and say, okay, I know I'm gonna be in that position one day, but let me see how they do it so I can know how, when I get in that position, I mm -hmm. know how to act and I know what certain things mean. And when I got in that position, the people on set noticed that. Mm -hmm. They were like, mm -hmm. oh, you don't do this. Like, I, it was things that I learned. I've gotten fired as an extra. Right, right. I've just, like, all those things that I've had to learn in the process, it, it came and worked out when I actually got mm -hmm. my opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad you brought up something about extra work. So different people in the industry, especially in, in acting and, and wanted to pursue and do bigger, and better things. Right. Some people really frown on extra work. Uh, right. I've heard that some people don't want to get like maybe, you know, typecast as, oh, we always see them around the extra field. Right, right, right. Uh, you've done extra work. Yeah. I've done some extra work. I'm not trying to pursue the acting, but I've done a lot of extra work, he, right? He's gotten highly paid from it. I heard, and I, I heard but, what he got. <laughs> but, but you know why I get paid from it? Because I get like the specialty extra, and right. they then they rent my equipment. Like it's, it's a different thing, right? Right, right. But what do you, how do you feel about that? Do you think that people should go for e extra work, or you think they shouldn't? Do you think, you know? Well, I think to be an extra, or do background, or be a background actor, that's mm -hmm. the proper term. I can only say that because I've done it. Okay, <laughs> background I, actor. Background actor. I've been a background it, actor many a day. Because if it wasn't for them, the project would not look real. That's right. That's right. Like that's how right. you see these other that's people right. in the store. That's like right. if they weren't there, that would, wouldn't them. be a real. Pay them in gummy bears. Oh right, got it. Oh, that's what that was. That. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like if if. Hello. <laughs> are we? Are we? No, are we going? We're oh, rolling. Okay. We're rolling through all this. Well, yeah. This is all good stuff. Right. This is real. This is but real that's what life. I'm saying. If we didn't have it's the people, if this no, was a real. video store, just what you the guy walking in the yeah. background, it wouldn't be a yeah. real scenario. That's right. So, that's right. um, that's right. though, they play a very important part. But yeah. I think people a lot of times look at it like this is my big break. This mm -hmm. is the opportunity that's mm -hmm. gonna bust me in, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be. And I think the best way to look at it is this is a chance to get behind the scenes information and insight on right. how it is right. to work on a professional right. set right. so that when you do get that opportunity you know okay right. that's what what the the lighting guy does that's what mm -hmm. the grip the mm -hmm. dp is the mm -hmm. ad mm -hmm. you learn you know all, all of that terms. you learn all the terms right. Right. and it's it's, it's do you actually, think it hurts you i mean do you do you think that there's a way that it can hurt you at all or you think any exposure is good exposure no it, it didn't hurt me at all okay. um it, it actually helped me because I've got, like I said, I've got fired mm -hmm. as an extra before. How'd you get, what a background actor. How did you get <laughs> fired? How'd you get fired as a background actor? I have to know the story. It's gotta be, so. what did See, you do? I like to think that they saw my talent and was like, you were outshining the main guy. Okay. That's what I think. Okay. It was just oozing off of me. Mm -hmm. But it might really been, happen. I don't know, sometimes, like it's long hours, you know, you, you're tired, you're walking around. Like, there are long hours. You know, I don't know, it's, it's a lot of things, but. You're not um, gonna tell them, you're not gonna tell Also, like extras, <laughs> so a lot of extras are crazy. No, for real, like they they yeah. really are kooky. Yeah, So yeah. Yeah. you know, real. some people will rat you out, like just, uh, you, you, you gotta yeah, you go. You get hated on because you were so good. We gonna go with that, we gonna go with that. <laughs> so. <laughs> But no, but but having said that, those mistakes and those things, or even like falling asleep and, and mm -hmm. holding and mm -hmm. like missing your but cue how, to go out. How can they be mad that you fall asleep? They hold you sometimes eight hours. No, no, no. But I ten would be hours. Like, this ain't why I got fired. But I'm just saying I would be in holding it's sleep. Like people, now. people, people wouldn't tap on my shoulder to tell me, "Oh, we're going to set." They so I would wake you, up looking around. <laughs> I'm still in holding. But but that's not why I got I would get fired. But those are things that when I did get booked and mm -hmm. was on set, I made sure I was up and right. I watched the right. principal actors, right. the um the main characters, and I would see, okay, Octavia Spencer's been on set for 15, 16 hours. Mm -hmm. She's not sleep. She's mm -hmm. looking energetic. She's she's staying alert. She took okay. a ten hour energy drink. Right, right. <laughs> but, but but having said it has a really nice air conditioned trailer on it. But with the bed in it. With well they bed. all have like she beds and couch. She could have took a nap. Well they but you know be, meaning when you're in the forefront right. 
the face you have to put on. Right, right. And so when I got in that position, I knew what to do. Okay. And and it showed, and I got really good comments and reviews on that for how I conducted myself, which is great. All this right. room is pretty dope right here. It's all like directors. Right. Right. So I was we checking got out Chris. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kevin Smith. Yeah. Chris Anderson. You know this guy? Todd. Yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse is. It's my, I, I guess it's my second favorite movie, so but it, Jerry. it battles back and forth. Like it's okay. Tell Jerry, me, tell Jerry me story takes about the title, this. but this is like really one of them. Uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse is about this girl named Don Wiener, who's like the middle child of her family. Is uh, she's the outcast, like in school, and her just everybody just ragging on her, like mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. for pretty much for no reason, but. Um, I relate to this movie a lot because in school I used to, I don't want to say get bullied because mm -hmm. I always talk back. I always, right, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you but, fought, it messed with you, but you fought back. Right, exactly. Right. Like, I felt like, it. yeah, I, was just, I wasn't just sitting there, right. but I did have like little moments where, you know, you go to the bathroom and cry and stuff. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> but, we've had but, those moments. But you didn't see it out loud, right. you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. But, but it just, I don't know, it just. I think even being an actor sometimes, like mm -hmm. you kind of feel like an outcast in a sense, and you yep. feel like other people don't really understand your dream. Like, mm -hmm. why are you going around not making any money right now, or why you know, like people? Why are you don't going here? Why are you out late doing this? Right. Why, why, are you, are you, why are you going to do this interview? Why right, you, right, right, right. They don't, the above, they, right. they don't get it right. until they see see it manifest. Right, and right. Because so, it's your vision, and it, it ain't for them it, to get it exactly. First. And so with that. To even be a dreamer sometimes is to, to isolate yourself mm -hmm. and to be mm -hmm. isolated, especially when everybody's dream consists of like in your neighborhood or your environment is like, oh, well, I want to be a football player. I want to be mm -hmm. a rapper. I want to mm -hmm. be play mm -hmm. basketball. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, but I don't know. This, this film is very significant to my childhood because it just reminds me of my childhood in, in a sense, wow. just being wow. a creative and I don't know. It just, it's one of those movies I could watch anytime it comes on and I, have it at the house and I don't so know. so you own this one at, at the house too? Yeah. It's on VHS or Divido? I say Divido. It's on the computer. <laughs> oh you get oh you got the, the pirate right, verse. Right. Well look, hey, no, no lime wire was used in the making of this. <laughs> <laughs> Is lime wire still around? No, no. Well, oh man, I show my age. Wow. That's, wow. that's what happened. Yeah, I, no. I, I might have to check your your license, man. Lime wire? Oh, nah, like Jeez. Alright, so you know you you've been grinding your ass off, right? Mm -hmm. You're on this uh, Emmy winning, not nominated, Emmy winning. Underline the winning. Winning series on Netflix. Yeah. Um, what's next, man? What do you think? You know what's funny? Like that, that, that question, mm -hmm. um, especially for creatives, mm -hmm. uh, is, is very interesting because trust me, if we knew, we right. would tell you. Right, of course, right, right. <laughs> you know and that's I mean? why I asked you, I, I want to see, because I get there, like, what's next? I, I don't know, I'm right. where I'm working. Like, right, exactly, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm working on it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, trust me, you, right. you gonna know right. when I know, you <laughs> why, know what I mean? Why you sound, why you get all old? You gonna know. You, oh, you, because you feel old. They call you, it's like funny, like when you read articles and they call you a newcomer, <laughs> Right. and I'm like, been doing this for years. Uh, <laughs> right, I'm new to you. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, like I'm look, sure you got stuff in the in the pipes. I'm sure you absolutely. got negotiations. I'm sure you're talking. I'm sure you probably got all kind of different irons in the fire. Audition constantly. Right. Like right. I think that's the thing, particularly with actors as well. I mean, with creators in general, but right. actors like, you know, right. you're constantly auditioning. You're constantly. Mm -hmm grinding mm -hmm. it's not something where you automatically just know right. all the all the right. time of course and i think that's kind of where my thing has been even with this this show like wondering like well when's the next job going to come because mm -hmm. you would think that you would already have had something by now right and it's kind of right. that shame sometimes of like well, i don't want to be talking about seven seconds forever i'm right. proud of the work right i think right. i did a great job i feel i'm proud of myself like i'm proud of the overall message for the show but there it there had there was a point where i i got very like i don't know if i want to keep talking about because it, it's again, that shame again, of looking at other right. people you know they might be moving forward or they mm -hmm. they're doing other things but what i had to remind myself was that you can't base your journey off of other people's right. journey. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And that this is a great opportunity that has 
opened up a lot of doors right, for me. Right, right. So I'm in a better position than a lot of people because I'm not where I used to be. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's been a few months, but like, and then the wind has actually revigorated us of a, course, a lot right. more. Oh yeah. And but it's also been a lot of people don't know how close I've come to a lot of stuff mm -hmm. in this year. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it's literally been like you think, oh, this is about to happen. I'm gonna hold for something right now. Right, you know right, what I mean? Like right, they like, don't you don't know how close yeah. you get. And sometimes it doesn't work out. It could be politics, it could be the right. look of the kid. It could be whatever. It might not have been your time. And right, then, exactly. And then it might not be a bad thing because sometimes some things get shut down to open up doors for something else. Absolutely. But, you know, somebody told me that a long time ago. I was like, man, I really want this. And really one day it's like, yo, silver, it's okay. Yeah. Because guess what? Some other things are coming down. So it's going to be the same. Yeah, thing. and when you look back on it, we we'll watch. You were watching this interview and right. be like, bro, he right. ain't even know that. He ain't even know. Yeah, yeah. He's the new yeah. Malcolm X. I don't know. Right. He's going to be here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, ready, ready. Last but not least, you know, I'm sure you've been through some ups, some downs, some merry-go-rounds. To the people that are coming up, watching this interview, and saying they want to, you know, start getting out there and what to do when they start going through hard times. What, what, How did you get through these hard times and what advice would you give when these hard times come? I think that you have to really just remember why you got into it in the first place. Like, mm -hmm. what's your purpose? Because mm -hmm. I think, especially nowadays with social media and, and just everything seeming so accessible to us, everybody thinks that this this is easy. Like, oh, I'm thinking about getting into acting. I get messages all the time. I'm thinking about getting into acting. It's like, well, you don't have to be booked to act. Right. Right. Every time right. I do an audition, I'm acting. I've never stopped acting. Right. You know right. what I mean? Every time you get a script in, in, in your hands, you can act, you can study right. it, you can right. learn. And, and But also, I, I remember the greater purpose. Hold on, let me see something. I, I have my mission statement. I have a, I have a mission. mission. I, so like a, like a corporation, like a LLC. Right, like a brand. Like a you brand. You know what I mean? But that helps keep me encouraged mission because statement. it lets me know, okay, you're not in it because of the fame or the clout right. or anything right. like that. You're in it because you want to inspire and change people's lives through entertainment the same way those lives. Is that the mission statement? Oh, no, no, hold on. No. Okay. I was like, man, that's, a, that's, that's dope. Whoa. Like, I, I wrote it. I was about I, to I, I'm about to take it. Hey, yo, it. yo. I'm about to take it. Yo, yo, I wrote I'm it. it. I don't have a ghostwriter, just so y'all know. All right. Yeah. My mission is to inspire generations through film, TV, theater, and music. My goal is to create timeless entertainment with heart, soul, and originality. My vision is to reach people of diverse cultural backgrounds worldwide with the objective of encouraging them to follow their dreams and remain true to themselves. Can you send me a copy of that? I'm gonna switch up some words. Oh, and put a few words. Oh, okay. <laughs> to, to DJ around the world and mix into to DJ right, lives. Right. That's right. And so, encourage them to mix the best mission of statement, their- Got I always wanted one of these. Yo, that's big. I, I mean, I think that's, that's really dope because if you remember the why, why you're doing it, I mean, that's, that's what it's about. And, and that's why you, and I'm learning also and touching on what I said previously, like you can't rag on your accomplishments because mm -hmm. you have people that are depending on you to inspire them. There's mm -hmm. people who are looking at you. Somebody, as a quote, somebody said that like, we're looking at, there's somebody on your page looking at something from a year ago and using it as inspiration for something new. And you know wild, what I mean? And, wild. and so yeah, with crazy. the show being in 193 countries, seven seconds, um, I've reached people of diverse cultural backgrounds yep. worldwide, yep. and I've got the messages I've gotten from the show. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and it, it, it stay, it's on there, so it's continuously yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. being discovered. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's just about just owning where you're at and enjoying it, enjoying the ride. Because when things really get up there, I, I'm sure like yeah. it's like we'll all be looking back like, dang, remember back yeah, when it was yeah. simpler? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, but yeah. Well, key question is, are you having fun? I'm having fun. Sort of Living right my in. best life. Yeah. Ain't going back to fuck with you, bleeps. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for saying bleeps. This is a family show. It is we... pretty family. I think I said ass back there, but I'm gonna bleep that. I think that's it. You say ass? I think back there I did. Did you say shit too? I, we just did say <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's gonna bleep. Well, that. that's bleeped. I, no, I'm not bleeping shit. No, no, I'm not bleeping <laughs> shit. <laughs> Corey Champagne, if you haven't checked it out, please go check it out. Seven Seconds is on Netflix. It's Emmy winning. It's got Regina King. It's got Corey Champagne. It's got Champagne Corey. Oh, wait, hold up. And, and I just want y'all to know that is not a stage name. That is a real name. Saucy.